Oh, is it on already? Yep, it's on. So okay. today's July 2nd, 2020. And what is your full name? Marsha Van S. And when were you born? When was your birthday? 1949. Okay. And where were you born? Grand Rapids. So you've been in Grand Rapids your whole life? Yes. And so did you go to high school in Grand Rapids? Yes, West Catholic. And what year did you graduate high school? 67. Oh, what a year to graduate high school. <laughs> so in high school, did you ever have, did you know what was going on in Vietnam? Did you have any concept of communism? What were your thoughts on the war at that time? Probably nothing. Uh, I, I remember hearing of one or two guys from my class who were going to go in after high school. Um, but I personally had no relatives or anybody close to me that has been involved. Okay. My family wasn't really military, although I had a couple uncles that had gone in World War II. Mm -hmm. um, no, I was pretty ignorant. I guess that's the main word I use is ignorant, did not know. So after high school, how did you get involved in the military? Okay, I, I went in, I started a nursing school at St. Mary's in Grand Rapids and it was a 27 year program. And when I told my dad I wanted to, seven kids, I'm from a family of seven, uh, all Catholic, we went to 12 years of Catholic school. So when I went to tell my dad I wanted to go there, he said, yeah, that's nice, but I can't afford to send you right up. And I kind of knew it. My mother was able to help me out the first year, and then I was getting a little concerned about the second year, and then they, the recruiters came to the, and talked to us. Um, it ended up that four girls from my class joined. They paid for our last year of school. We, I don't remember. We were the lowest rank, I'm sure, but they had to put us in the Army, and we got a check every month. And it was more than we needed for, for um, tuition and stuff. And then, so we graduated in December. Oh, so 67? Was it? Nine. Nine, 69. Nine. Yeah, yeah. Because okay. it was an odd number, 27. And I think we were the last class. And I think after that, they dropped it down to 24 months. So anywho, we graduated in December. And I think, and then we took our state boards. And I kept saying, what if I don't pass? Well, don't worry. Yeah, right. But I um, did pass. And that was February. And I think, so the four of us went down to Fort Sam Houston, Texas. So that was first time out of, no, not the first time out of the state, but for me it was a real trip. Mm -hmm. uh, six weeks basic training down there. Uh, and when we had our recruiting, that was the other thing I should backtrack. Um, you can go one of three places, you give your choice, or you can go on the buddy system. Oh, so Kathy and me and this other Kathy and Jan, buddy system, okay. Well, after in Fort Sam Houston, we got our orders and not and neither thing. She got Fort Knox and I got Fort Carson or something. We're like, no. So uh, depends who you know. So somebody told me who to go talk to and I got it changed. So I went to Fort Knox with her. Mm -hmm. And it turned out, and I worked in surgery. I love surgery. I wanted it to be my, what do they call it? MOS. <laughs> but uh, I had to take their course, the Army course. Um, and I signed up to do it. But before I could do it, I got my orders to go to Vietnam. And so when did you get those orders? Do you remember? Oh, well, I went in October, so I must have gotten them, I'd say September. Okay. Because they give you a little time to go home first. Mm -hmm. um, and I went over there in October of 70, came back in November of 71, uh, uh, six weeks longer, because I found out if I only had uh, less than three months left, I would be discharged. They would not reassign me for that short a time. And I felt comfortable doing what I was doing, so um, I, I stayed that extra six weeks and was able to be discharged. And out of the four of us, okay, three of us went to Vietnam, and my room, my one of them went to Korea. Mm -hmm. So we all got over. Oh, don't worry about going overseas. You got to be in the military a year before. Oh, okay. So I kind of lost a little bit of faith. I wasn't quite as naive as I used to be, <laughs> but I was. I still was. I still was. I was pretty ignorant. That's the only. Naive, both of those things. I really didn't. So, how did you feel before you went to Vietnam, knowing you were going to Vietnam? Well, I met some of the guys that had been over there. I think I even dated somebody back here, but I was still—I didn't know. I really didn't know. Um, I was—I never really cared for history. <laughs> uh, one of my brothers did go in the National Guard, and he was involved in the riots back in was it 68, 69, sometime when we had him. And I think he went to Detroit. Um, Another brother wanted to go in but couldn't go in. He died diabetic, and the other one was younger, so he was still in college. Mm -hmm. um, but like I said, I, I just didn't know. I thought, well, I'm a nurse. I'm going to be a nurse. I'm going to be in a hospital. No big deal. That's kind of how I... So when you uh, land in, or how do you get to Vietnam? What's, where did you land when you got there? I landed in Tansanut Air in Saigon. Mm -hmm. 
And I know everybody says how all oh, the heat hit them and the smell. I don't remember that stuff. Yeah. And whether I'm just, I, I guess I don't remember details like a lot of people did. But I do remember that's where we, we initially landed. And I don't think I stayed over. I think from there they sent us, a bunch of us, to um, 93rd, 93rd Replacement at um, Benoit. Now, some of that has changed over the, because I've read other people's things, and they call it something different. No, 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 it was Benoit, it wasn't long, whatever. And there, w w which hospital do you, would you like to go? I don't know, because I didn't talk about that with anybody. But, because um, one of my pictures in here is the one of my first days there with a couple of the other nurses. And um, so from there we went in a bus. with the, and, and it was a little bizarre, because I wasn't, the, seeing all the military, all the weapons, the uh, the jeeps and the trucks, and um, it was a little, I can't know if it was frightening, but it was a little odd, mm -hmm. you know. It, it, um, and then when I got to the hospital itself, 20, 25th back at Long Bin. Now maybe that had been someplace different, I don't know, but for me it was, that's where it was. Um, it had been there quite a few years, I guess. Um, the cat, and I can't remember what he said, the commandant. Something about we haven't taken any income, incoming for I can't remember if he said three months, four months, something. I thought incoming. <laughs> what are you talking about? So was that anything you'd ever thought of? No, no. Hospitals are safe. I'm in a safe place. Nothing's going to happen. And f for the most part, nothing did to me. But we could hear stuff, and that kind of shook me a little in the beginning. But he would say, "Oh, it's our guys on the perimeter shooting out." Okay, <laughs> and and then uh, I wasn't that far from Saigon, so a couple of times once I got comfortable, I was like, oh, you fu you bum a ride with somebody in a truck or a jeep, guys that are, and you never went alone. It was always other corpsmen or you know, and we would go into Saigon just for the, a few hours or whatever. Well, just right down that road, while I was there, a Vietnamese guy got ambushed with his wife. I think he was killed, and his wife was pregnant. She came to the hospital and delivered her baby, and so that was kind of fun. Yeah. But that kind of shook me, because I thought, that's right out, you know. And then also the place that I went to, this 93rd replacement, that place was hit while I was there. Uh, I didn't know the person, but I was told that a couple of people from the lab were going home were killed, and of course people who came were just coming in were killed. Um, whether those were planned, because that was some of the jokes that, yeah, they're, they're aiming one place and they hit something else, you know, but I don't know. Um, my hospital itself was not ever under attack or anything like that. Um, but I know there was one nurse, and I don't know how much you know of the nurses, but the one nurse was killed during getting hit. Yeah. Um, other than that, um, she was, and then the helicopter was the other, and they, and I couldn't wait to get there because I knew guys who had flown helicopters. We met them at Fort Sam Houston. They were there for their basic medical. And I thought, oh my God, I can't. And I ran into one or two of them. They wouldn't take us up. They, and I, they used to, but because of that helicopter crash, they were very careful about letting us get on anything. Um, I did get to fly one time, and again, I don't remember what time of the year it was, but there was an Australian hospital mm -hmm. uh, at uh, Cameron Bay, no, was that where, someplace on the, sh on the sea, on the, on the water. A mm -hmm. uh, couple nurses from there came to our hospital, a couple of us went to theirs, just for I think a week. Oh my gosh, it was like being in heaven, it was like, <laughs> I mean it was so different, so different. Just seeing the, I mean, made me feel like I was back in Michigan somewhat, you know, yeah. but they called up their nurse's sister. And they were little, or well, whatever. Uh, so that was a nice, ex but then I got to fly. That was the only time they would let me fly in a helicopter, mm -hmm. there and back. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah, they didn't, uh, and then the other awful thing that happened while I was there, um, I can't, again, don't remember when or where, but a nurse had been attacked in her room by a GI, which uh, really, you know, yeah, don't be afraid of the enemy, be afraid of your fellow m veterans. Um, she wasn't, I don't, you know, she, I think she got, I don't know if she got sent home or if she stayed or whatever, but we were, then they put up a, um, a fence, <laughs> like how to picture me, <laughs> around the hooch, hooches mm -hmm. and, and an MP, mm -hmm. 
And that, that had to be close to me going home because I don't remember it being there for, for very long. So that was kind of sad, yeah. you know. But for the most part, the GIs would treated us wonderful. Oh, I bet. They really, really did. Were they just appreciative to see a, like a, an American woman? Yes, yes. Yeah. I got to be... <laughs> I got a little tired of it in a way because there was so a lot of this was a big base. It had two hospitals. Of course, one was closed while I was there, so I knew things were slowing down. Um, and they had headquarters, and so there was a lot, a lot of things, a lot of people there. So some of these guys were just cocky, mm -hmm. you know, because they were not out in the field. They were, you know, and I got, oh, you know, no, I don't want to go to your party. I mean, it was silly to not want to, but I got to the point where I was tired of it. Mm -hmm. I'm not here to entertain you. It was kind of my nasty thinking and um, um but uh, the patients were the ones that were awesome yeah. they were so like you said just so appreciative and they were um once or twice i may have had a patient that got a little cock uh, smart ass but no it was always ma'am or lieutenant mm -hmm. you know very very polite so of the patients that you would treat you had mentioned that you that woman that pregnant vietnamese woman had delivered her baby uh -huh. did you have a lot of vietnamese patients as well from around like the we civilians? had enough they would, from what I was told, they, if they say a, a GI Jeep hit them, <laughs> or you know, uh, uh, one of our, they would come to us mm -hmm. because they knew our emergency was better. Uh, so yeah, we probably had maybe one all the time on the okay. on the unit. They did come to us. They didn't like to go to their. I shouldn't say that. I don't know where the. I guess Saigon would have been the closest hospital. Yes, we did get a few of them. Um, uh, enough of them. We also got the prisoners, and that was a hard one for me. Um, and they wanted them. They wanted them to keep them alive because the ones that we had were probably the ones that they could interrogate and blah, blah, blah. So I remember specialing at least one or two of them all night long just to keep, give them blood and meds and keep them. And the, right in the ward with the GIs. When I, before I got there, I was told they had a whole unit, because these were long, hooch type. There was one just for prisoners. Well, there weren't that many anymore, so they closed it, and now they put them in the units with on the wards with our guys. And the, just the looks from, and there was no divisions. Mm -hmm. There was no curtains or anything. And I'm, I, and the MPs were there, and I thought, well, I'm fine. <laughs> so I'm thinking the guard is there for me. Oh, no, he was there for the prisoner. He'd go out for a smoke or something, and the guys, the guys would get up and go to the, you know, maybe uh, do his IV or, <laughs> or do, I thought, you guys go back to your, <laughs> go to your bed. I can't blame him because they might have been the guy, his might have been the guy that just blew, blew him up, you know. Mm -hmm. And then I would, and I tell the veterans this and they think it's funny. I took care of him like I had to. I mean, I, I can't say I ever not did something for them, but I might not have been as kind as I could have been. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I'd roll, and they, they were afraid of us. They were, I guess, had all these stories that we were going to hurt them and uh, whatever. So anything you told them to do, they would do it. Mm -hmm. You know, I said, and I'd smile. You son of a bitch, why don't you roll over and I'll give you something for pain? You know, <laughs> that, that kind of stuff, you know. And, and they would do, you know. They're, I, but that's, I guess, how I got rid of some of my mm -hmm. hostility. Mm -hmm. And I know the guys did worse than that, but um, I guess I didn't do anything bad. I just was probably, and they liked to give them to me. I don't know why, <laughs> but I took prisoners often. <laughs> Four so in, guys. In 1970, well, so in 69, Nixon starts troop withdrawal. So you're in in 70 and 71. What type of, like, what were the most types of injuries that you would see in, in your hospital? I, we still had a lot of, um, I think, booby traps, I guess is mm -hmm. what you call them, the bouncing yeah. beddies, amputees, a lot of amputees. I remember one, uh, it was a Vietnamese woman, but she, I had, I've had guys that had both legs gone. This one woman had both legs and an arm. Um, so yeah, and, and we just didn't know what was happening down the road, you know, how much these guys really went through. Um, then we started, oh, I can't remember his name, but I was told that the, one of the neurosurgeons or the hospital that had neurosurgeons closed, so we got head injuries then too. Uh, I don't know how many hospitals closed, but so then we started the, those guys, and that was worse. That was worse because the ones that you know, the, you know about the triage and ER, yes. right? Well, then we'd get these guys, and they would put them in the corner and put a fence, a fence thing around them, and tell us, um, keep an eye on them, watch them. We'll take these guys first. If he's 
uh, still alive when we get done, then we'll take him. Mm -hmm. That was probably the hardest thing for me to, to deal with. And you could, and most of them were head injuries and most of them didn't make it through that couple hours of time. Uh, but that was probably the hardest thing for me. So head amputations, and they never had one, and that's the other thing that struck me, not like you see on TV, one hole. They had multiple, partly because of the, uh, whatever they stepped on, there's a lot of shrapnel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, they'd be, there. one guy I remember, they hit all across his butt and his legs and nothing bad, but it was still a lot of little injuries. Mm -hmm. um, and the, and the other, I was so naive. I had only worked in surgery after school uh, in the Army, so I didn't, I hadn't done anything but take blood pressures. I mean, you know, so I was really green. And so these, they would, um, God, what's the word? Um, they never wanted to close the wounds in Vietnam because of the danger of infections. Because okay. some of that stuff, who knows what they dumped it in the dung or whatever, you know, so they, they would do that on some of them. Yeah, yeah, so they didn't want to close them. So everybody came out of surgery open, you know, they didn't, but we, you know, would pack them and whatever, whatever. <laughs> but then the guys that still who had the little ones, we still would have to deal with those. And they would debride them. That was, you know, take get the healthy skin and then we put a gauze on it and then cover it. And then I think once or twice a day we would change it. Well, I didn't want to hurt them. Mm -hmm. So I would soak the gauze with saline before I pulled it off. No, no, no. <laughs> we want it to bleed. We want it to pull off the dead tissue that's still in there. Mm -hmm. But it hurt. No, you have to do it this way, you know. So I learned. Okay, okay. Um, and then, the, I, those were hard for the guys, like, you know, because there was no, like I said, no change, no uh, curtains or anything. Mm -hmm. So the guy with the butt still had to roll over and, you know, get that done too. Yeah, <laughs> poor so, guy. And would you treat people at your hospital and then send them to a different hospital afterwards if their wounds were serious, or the send them back into the field? The, yeah, and I don't know who made those decisions. Of course, it had to be the doctors. If they were my, I don't know if anybody went right back to the field from us. They usually weren't in the hospital if there was nothing. Even the guy with the butt things, I don't think he could go back. Okay. He probably, maybe he did go back to a, a area where he could work out outside the field, mm -hmm. you know. But other than that, we sent them out of Vietnam as quick as we could. And where would you send them, do you know? <sighs> I think mostly to Japan. Okay. I think that was the closest. From us, they would go to Saigon, Thompson Air Force Base. The guys that uh, could would go in a, a, I guess a truck or a jeep. No, probably a truck, and they'd be driven out. The other bad ones would go in the middle of the night, and they'd be helicopter choppered out. Because um, I, I remember again, there's you know certain ones I remember staying up at them all night to get a, one guy we had that. Uh, he needed dialysis. We didn't have that in Vietnam. Saigon did. They had a fancy, a nice hospital, uh, I can't remember, something field, for, I don't know. So kept him going on, and he was another one I kept going all night, all night to get him to that. And the next day we heard from the Air Force nurses that he didn't make it. He died in the helicopter. You know. And then there was another burn patient. Oh, that was the other fun thing. As they were closing hospitals, we got the burn unit. How do you have, you know, the, all they did was put up a wall at that end of the, the unit and uh, with a door. And I think it was six beds. That was the burn unit. Very poor as far as sanitation, uh, uh, sterility and all mm -hmm. that stuff. Um, but one of those guys, same thing. We had to, uh, he needed to get out and we wrapped him and he started running a temp and the doc said, get him out, get him out. Well, he, he didn't make it home either. You know, we've heard you know, that he died, probably got a real bad infection or whatever. So those nighttime flights were, um, were, were not good. And they didn't, they wanted them out, I swear most of them were probably out within a week. So you didn't really get to know them too much, and that's probably good, <laughs> you know. Um, I think one or two did write back after they had, the ones that weren't quite so bad, mm -hmm. uh, did write back to us, which was nice. Um. Tell me about what like a typical day would have been like for you. Well, we worked 12 hours, six days a week. Pro I, and the daytime, you'd come in and the uh, night nurse would give report, um, depending on how many guys were in there. Mm -hmm. Usually meds started 8, 9 o'clock, and we did everything ourselves. We didn't have the 
pharmacy to mix our IVs and stuff, and almost everybody was getting IVs uh, and IV uh, antibiotics uh, or um, the shot ones. Oh God, what was that? Penicillin, or it looked like milk. Yeah, so medication was a biggie. And the, and the IVs, we had a mix of, you know, put the vitamin. <laughs> I remember one, I think it was a Vietnamese lady, she, uh, I don't know how much you know, but when people lose a lot of blood, um, they, they can get jaundice. Mm -hmm. Uh, and this lady was yellow. <laughs> so we, because of the vitamin, the vitamin in her IV, <laughs> that makes her yellow. How do you explain to, we couldn't. So I thought that was not very nice, but it, <laughs> it satisfied the family. Um, and then we, everybody had to have their dressings changed, usually in the morning, uh, everybody. <laughs> um, and we just would, I, don't, I can't remember how we got notified that we were getting somebody new. Okay, the other thing, I started out, maybe this is a, a way to start, I started out in pre-op and recovery, okay, which, um, uh, again, like I said, they bring them in before they go to surgery, then we get them, and they, obviously, and then they go to the different units. And uh, I don't, we had a lot of units. The, uh, every orthopedic had one, um, head had one, everybody had their own. Well, again, that all started changing. Mm -hmm. Then they also closed the pre-op and recovery and put it, because they didn't have that many, they put the recovery room in the in surgical ICU, which was where I was, which was they, I got moved to, which was kind of a joke <laughs> because we had one scope, a oscilloscope, to watch a monitor of blood pressure. Uh -huh. Oh, I'm sorry, leave it. Um, only one, and, and uh, it's, a, it's an ICU, mm -hmm. you know? It was not adequate, um, so that so then the um, even for, so from there they would still go up to the other units, so it really slowed down. You know, I hate, you know I don't mean to keep making those excuses, but it did. Um, and I remember once or twice I went on the um, what you, uh, med med. We went to the orphanages and places like that yeah. to see the kids and we they they would give in you know we took a few back with us that had pneumonias or whatever and um, I think the docs wanted something to do you know they didn't want to just sit would you vaccinate the children I don't think we did I don't remember doing that I don't re you know I really don't remember doing that I didn't do a whole lot I just I don't think I did because the docs did most of it um, so the um, the unit then the set the ICU, which is like we had three medical post op unit connected. Mm -hmm. They're like Quonset huts. Okay. Okay, and then in the middle they were connected. Uh, so I kind of covered off. Could be any three of those, but uh, the ICU was the one I did the most. Respirators really was bad because we didn't have too many um, therapists to take care of those. So we mm -hmm. kind of would wean our own patients. <laughs> I remember one of the first, and this nurse was so cool, she was a captain. It's funny, the certain things I remember. Um, and I came in, in the, it was during the day, I think in the morning, and a guy was on a respirator, and um, somebody said something about, um, we he's still breathing. I think I was, they were giving reporters, I can't remember for sure, but somebody said he's not, um, he doesn't have a heartbeat. I thought, what? He's breathing. <laughs> There's no, go check him. And I, and I said, no. Well, start CPR. I thought, what? Start. And I don't think I had ever done it, you know, because I was. So it had to be in the beginning of my my tour. I never gave CPR to anybody. Well, maybe once, but really did not do it that often. He said, well, start. I thought, what? What are you talking about? I don't do it. Yeah, you do. Mm -hmm. um, you learn real quick to do those uh, normal. <laughs> I don't know if they're normal, but. Um, let's see what other weird, just some, and we had a board that was um, short timers board and we used um, tongue blades to say when we were going home because <laughs> I think I have a picture of me go short, I was <laughs> like I was up at the top, you know, and they'd go short, you know, uh, we kept track of that kind of stuff. Um, medication wise and um, nurse doctor orders things, um, we got pretty free to do what we felt was the right thing to do. And it, it took me probably five, six months to get the, to that point. Mm -hmm. um, 
but like after surgery, the, the docs would I just write, you know, advanced diet is tolerated, DCIV went, went to, you guys, yeah, we can do that. Just, you know, just, and we, you know, it, yeah, we can, we know how to do that. And if the guy looked like his blood pressure was dropping or he was, we'd check out, take some blood and we could do a blood test right on the unit. Mm -hmm. So we could check his hemoglobin right there. And uh, the medication, same thing. If they were having, ah, uh, we'd give them this for a headache. You'd give them that if he couldn't sleep. Not, nothing big, mm -hmm. but things that you could never get away with here. Um, and one guy, I remember, was having a blood reaction. I knew it. I just knew that's what it was. Um, we, how do you call the doctor? They don't have PA systems, you know? <laughs> so we called his hooch. We called the, the, I think it was the uh, officer club. We couldn't find him. So I just went ahead and uh, stopped the blood, gave him a shot of Benadryl, and ordered another unit of blood. He comes walking in about a half hour later. Yeah, did you need me? And I, so I told him what I did. <laughs> and, oh, okay, good. <laughs> he read it out his orders. You know, I thought, okay, I got to cover my butt, and so did he. But I, you know, they would have fired me if I had done that. Mm -hmm. So some of that was a lot of nice freedom yeah. that we could use our skills. Um, some had better than others, of course, but I felt comfortable doing that stuff. Um, and and I, I kind of liked the idea of <laughs> being able to make some choices. Well, and you probably had more freedom than some of the GIs did in their units, right? Like the men probably didn't have that freedom in the field that you had. Well, some, they, they I guess there were certain things they could do. Mm -hmm. I, I, if it wasn't for those medics, those guys wouldn't have made it. Yeah. I have to say that. I mean, and I had got quite a few that would come back and ask how so-and-so is, how's he doing kind of thing. Um, I got called into ER one time when I was uh, still in pre-op and because it was connected, I think x-ray, lab, and then ER or something like that. Um, they got like three choppers in at once, which is unusual at that time, right? And I'm thinking, oh, I never worked in ER except as a student. And I was just super impressed with the way those people functioned. Yeah. Uh, they got in there and I had some guy, I, I couldn't tell if he was black or white, Vietnamese, I mean, they were so dirty. That was part of the problem, you know, the mud and, you know, they ripped the clothes off and, okay, I can start an IV. Yeah, I can take a blood. What else can I do? Well, boom, 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 boom. The docs are... And again, it was, the, as far as I know, the doctors made those choices. I don't think nurses did. At least, again, not where I was. We had enough doctors. They did the triage. Um, I don't think the nurses ever had to. Um, and some years before, some hospitals, maybe the nurses did have to when they had so many straddle out on the field or whatever. But um, we never, our nurses, I don't believe, had to make those choices. Um, which was nice, I guess. <laughs> uh, they did not, oh, they, I wanted to say too, when I wanted to work in surgery, they wouldn't let me because I didn't have the training. That's why they put me in pre-op, which is probably better. I, you know, uh, uh, the, sto the stories I heard and some of the stuff I saw, uh, uh, OR would have been pretty tough. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I really think it would have been. Do you have any um, patients that you treated that really stick out to you in your memory? Well, I mentioned some of them already. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> and there's another one. Well, he's in the picture, too, because he was so damn cute. <laughs> a kid from uh, from the South. I, I Freckles. I mean, he got shot uh, in the neck or somewhere is where he came to us with the trach. And he, we didn't know if he was going to make it. Then I got another picture of him smiling, you know. He was cool. I got, to, I got to spend a little more time with him. We had one guy who was... Uh, couple of them who had been con some congressman's son, whatever, and so they got a little extra, but not really, not really, but I remember him. Um, I think he had the, somebody had a huge wound in their groin, like with the, um, and if the medic had not put on that tourniquet, he would have lost his leg, mm -hmm. or he could have even died, for mm -hmm. all we knew. Um, I, I, can, I can see him, and then again, that little Vietnamese lady with the three <laughs> or things blown away. Um, the guy with the butt, we, what else would else? The few heads. We, um, oh gosh, there was something I was just thinking. Uh, a bad one, but again, it was Vietnamese. A guy was um, gorged by a pig, or those, uh, I don't know if it's a pig or those ugly, big 
like a pig? Okay. What are they? Are they? Are you talking about water buffaloes? No, it wasn't like a, way too big. It wasn't a buffalo. I don't know, but it was something that had horns. <laughs> and and um, from what I was told, again, he was in. I didn't see him uh, going in. Um, red in half. Okay, and the docs, and they kind of admitted it later. They kind of did it. Uh, tried to save them, mm -hmm. kind of to experiment. Can we save somebody like this? Mm -hmm. um, and he came out, and they had pillows at the foot of, because he had no, the bottom was gone, mm -hmm. you know, and his family was there. They always let the Viet their families, and which is, but they had the pillows there, so you couldn't tell the body was half gone. And I didn't know it either, until I, uh, to get, to get a unit of blood, I had a sh something with this diagnosis on it. So I go to the lab, and I hemicopectomy, hemi is half, Corpec, that's body, was it half a body? I mean, I just, yeah. They had, were able to hook everything. He, he had all his organs. They were able to hook everything up. Uh, he had the, uh, for the urine, he had it for the bowel, he had, you know, but he didn't live very long. Yeah. I think he lost too much blood. But I think the idea that they possibly could have, maybe if it wasn't quite so bad, yeah. um, then we, Again, guys don't like to hear this, but there did start to be problems with drugs while I was there. And I remember getting a couple guys in, with regular wounds, I mean, they were shot or whatever, and we just could not take care of their pain. Their pain was just, finally, they admit that they had been taking stuff. So then we knew we had to up it a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I remember one, at least one guy who we had to do surgery on because his, um, Bawa was so messed up from the drugs, I guess. He wasn't eating, I don't remember for sure, but he, that was pretty sad. Yeah. Um, I didn't like to see that, but it was happening, and um, they turned a, one of the hospitals at Conrad Bay into a drug you, you rehab. So was that big of a problem? Yes, back again, 71 probably, mm -hmm. is one that started. Um, they didn't want, the guys didn't, I don't think most of them wanted to go home with it. Um, and and I, they wanted to get them, clean before they went home. We couldn't even go any place without being checked. Uh, the nurse would, or head nurse, somebody would come in and say, okay, give me some urine, drop some urine, take me into the bathroom, watch me, make sure I gave her my own urine. You couldn't leave the country without doing it. Um, and if you had it, you didn't go. So it, it did, I, 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 it was prob this again was a, a big base I was at. So I can't say the guys out in the field were doing it. Mm -hmm. And most of them are going to, because I remember when I went to one of these school functions, one of the infantrymen, because the kids always ask, that's what they ask. Mm -hmm. How many people did you kill? How did it, what kind of a weapon did you, I mean, that dumb, what they see on TV. And one of, so one of the guys would say, um, okay, you, you play football, right? Well, if one of your buddies is high on a pot or taking, co you want him on your team? Can you depend on him? No. Well, that was the same way we felt out in the field. Mm -hmm. And a couple of them had admitted to me that, oh, he had an accident. Oh, he, uh, something, uh, he isn't able to, he hurt his foot or some might, they didn't want him with him. They, because they knew, I think, who was doing it. And I, again, when I was there, it probably wasn't that many out there, but they, the, guy, the other guys didn't want him around. Mm -hmm. I knew a couple doctors and a couple corpsmen that were doing the stuff. Um, I tried. I thought, shit, I get, I get high on beer, you know. <laughs> I knew what I could handle with beer, but I tried pot once or twice and I didn't like it. So I know it was available. And we, the ones that were, we did kind of report them. We didn't want them doing anything because they shouldn't have been mm -hmm. doing anything. Um, but yeah, because I was, um, gosh, when we did, my grandma died in the summer, I think, of 71. And I was, they were going to give me a, a not, I can't remember. Some a, a quick little visit home, because um, it wasn't that busy, right? Well, I, and the, our guys, our people didn't know about the urine yet. <laughs> so I show up at the airport, and they wouldn't let me go because I hadn't given a urine specimen. I thought, what? No, nope, you go back. You're not going. So the, then the colonel tried to get me another one, and I said. <laughs> This is tomorrow. She was buried yesterday. Whatever, you know, that time. To, I said, no, don't don't even bother. I, I won't even go home. Yeah. It just wasn't worth it at that time. Um, so, we, unfortunately, it was a problem for a lot of guys. And um, it just changed so much while, they, while we were there. Mm -hmm. the, the, um, 
I didn't get into the politics a lot, but I could definitely see the difference in the guys. Yeah. Um, and I know we, we get some uh, army news or I don't know, some of those things and we'd be reading them and they'd say like, oh yeah, you know, uh, four GIs died last, wait, what do you mean? We had three. I mean, there had to be more than that. That kind of stuff where I started doubting that they weren't always telling the truth, which again, I had been pretty naive. You believe what the government tells you and if they say this, so I, that really shook me. I, that really bothered me that I felt that I couldn't always trust what they were saying. And then what do you do? You know? Yeah. So when do you get to go home? When did I? Yeah. When did you? So you were there for 13 months. Yeah. So I went home um, November middle. I think it was towards the end of November. Okay. Um, and that was kind of sad because my no one was at the airport. <laughs> my parents I, or me got mixed up with the time change from Chicago <laughs> and there was nobody there I thought oh you know. how disappointing yes it was <laughs> yes it was what did so 71 the anti-war movement's kind of you know dying down because you know we were in the sustained withdrawal in 71 mm -hmm. did you ever like did you anticipate or did you have any you know anti-war protesters or anything no no not me and and I we had heard about them over mm -hmm. there still right. some of that stuff had started but um, I think Michigan is just a pretty, no, can't, I can't remember where I landed. Obviously, California. Um, I can't remember what city. But they had told us to get, uh, to get out of your clothes as soon as you could. Mm -hmm. And I remember I knew somebody in California, so I stopped to see her and bought some new clothes. Um, I didn't, but I, later I heard of guys who did. Do you think maybe because you're a woman, people may just not assume that you were... No, 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 I just think it was 71, maybe they weren't doing it as much. Right. That's the other thing. I don't, because the people I know that were, it was back in the 68, 69, or during more of the, the, the bad stuff. More of the unrest? Yeah, okay. but I got it, um, pissed about it, because in my one of my nursing ma magazines, somebody commented about uh, supporting the war and blah, blah, blah. The, I'm supporting the guys. I'm not so, you know. So that really irked me, and I got a little more involved then with the the, the uh, women's memorial when I was reading that kind of thing. That isn't true. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't support no war, although again I thought it was justified, and maybe in the beginning it was, but then since then I've read. Well, years later I've read all these other things that throw out all these other weird little things and I wish I didn't know it you know yeah. but the guys and I agree with them you have to don't tell me we lost the war okay I because that happened a couple of times at these school things and oh those we didn't lose we did not lose any war we didn't lose any major battles blah blah, blah you know they almost have it all not memorized but they know they they're proud of what they did although some of it went a little too far but I can't judge that either because I wasn't there. Mm -hmm. you know, that you know, that's a thing. theme that I hear many veterans say um, in the oral histories that I've conducted. Almost yeah. every man has said, we didn't lose the war, it was politicians right. that lost yes. the war. Yes, yeah. yes. That if we had, especially the bombing, if we had continued bombing, you know, we would have made this. Or uh, And they were going into Cambodia, I guess, and th that's, it, it never said anything, you know. Mm -hmm. They weren't uh, 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 telling the whole truth on that. Yeah. So that's too bad, that's too bad. So when you get home um, at the end of 71, did you stay in nursing after mm -hmm, that? Mm -hmm, and So mm -hmm. you got out of the military pretty quickly yeah, after that. Yeah, I, I was discharged right away. Okay. I didn't even have to go anyplace. I got my discharge papers and all of that, again, in Cal wherever I was in California. Mm -hmm. Why can't I remember that <laughs> stuff? Those are the details. I, I don't know. I guess I've always kind of been that way. It's not important, so don't remember it. Um, my family treated, I had like three or four friends that I had kept in touch with while I was gone, but most of them, I lost, you know, family, oh, you're home. It was no big deal to them, They and it's hard to ex tell you. But yeah, I stayed in nursing. Um, I went to a small hospital in Grand Rapids, at the Osteopathic Hospital. Okay. Couple, I had a couple of friends who were already working there. Um, and it was, I told them, I mean, I, I never did not say that I had been over there. And I, and I know nurses who wouldn't tell people, but I didn't have that problem. No, I do not want to work in ER. No, I do not want to work. I, I'll take care of 
surgical patients, I still like that, but people who get better and go home. And, and that, that was for me, that's what I wanted. And again, I'd rather take care of men. <laughs> you know, so, so I had a, a few little, and I worked there 36 years. Oh wow, okay. Yeah, I went to different units and did different things, but, um, and then at, back when, gosh, I can't even remember when the nurses thing was dedicated, 92, 90, I don't remember. But again, I, I had contacted this woman in Michigan, and, and so she, well, you wanna try to help raise some money? Sure. So a lot of people at the hospital didn't know that I was, a, well, I started posting things and sending out. I had quite a bit of support, a lot of the doc. I even turned out like three or four of the doctors had been over there, which, and then, you know, did not know. Mm -hmm. So I started raising money for them, um, for that re, uh, uh, memorial. Other than that, I don't, no, they, um, most, no, I didn't get anything bad there, any bad vibes from anybody. I don't think I ever did except the written word when somebody had complained or mm -hmm. criticized nurses. So you said that you weren't political, but did you, um, after you were out in 71, did you follow, you know, the Paris Peace Accords in 73 or the fall of Saigon in 75? Probably not as close as I should have. Okay. I don't know why. I, did you I, have any I, thoughts the, on the fall of Saigon or like, was it, were you sad about it? Oh or, yeah, I mean, because I had been there mm -hmm. a couple times, you know, and, and I knew what it was like, and and it was a safe place for for everybody, really, and to think that they could get down that far, that's pretty south, <laughs> you know, <Yep. laughs> and because most of the fighting had been up there, um, and yeah, I I, I, w I was very surprised. And it made it did make me kind of mad. <laughs> I don't know if mad is the right word, but very disappointed. Yeah. And that uh, mostly, I think, because our guys had done so much, the ones that had been there previously, and if they had continued, that never would have happened. Yeah. That's, yeah, I, I felt really bad about that. I, I didn't follow, well, I did a little bit with those, with the Paris people, but I got tired of listening to them. Politicians. You know? Isn't that, yeah. yeah, isn't that sad? Um, and now every once in a while I hear, I hear things, I read a book and something about Kissinger. I, thought, I don't want to hear it, you know, I don't want to know. Um, that's being stupid and naive, but I don't know if you always have to know everything. Well, for your own sanity sometimes. Well, that's right. a good point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I have to believe that the beginning was the right thing to do. Because I really, you know, the, the people liked us. The Vietnamese people, the ones that I did see on a uh, normal basis, like the Americans, mm -hmm. you know. Um, they did They did a lot of, they were working in most of the areas in, on, on base. Mm -hmm. You know, they were the cooks and they were the, the, the little mamas on did our laundry. Every, you know, they'd wash it by hand and they'd hang it outside and they'd iron it and you know, shine my boots and, you know. And I, th I think, well, I, again, you hear the stories about the guys and the whores. I know that stuff happened. I'm not naive, but um, most of them, I think, were treated pretty good, good. by the guys, yeah. Um, <laughs> some of those, the, I could tell the, some of the ladies didn't like us. Because they'd go to the, we had a PX. This was a good size base, right? They didn't want to wait on us. We could tell they'd go to the, okay. with the guys all the time. Same thing with the, um, officers club, they would be the bartenders. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you could just tell the way they looked, they didn't want us around because we were competition, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I thought it was kind of funny. Um, no, honey, you can have them. I don't want them, you know. <laughs> what do you think is in the biggest impact that your service in Vietnam has had on the rest of your life? Well, for one thing, I don't like uh, the, the, the action movies. The killings. I don't like. Um, even with my kids, I didn't like them getting involved in that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, what? I, I. To me, I think that's the worst part. I don't think it's an, an entertaining. Uh, I don't think people realize how how bad it really is. I, I'm not as trusting as I used to be. Um, I, I. Not that I question everything, but I am a little more. A little more careful on, on what I believe and who I believe. 
I, I know you can, I, I've changed my mind on things just because you, you, you learn more about it. And I really learned to respect the military a lot more than I ever did. My father was very, was patriotic. I mean, we always went to the uh, Memorial Day Mass at the cemetery. We all, I mean, there were certain things we all, we would stand with us anytime we heard the national anthem. I mean, we, we were patriotic, but I don't know, I think this, because I'm part of it, I guess. Mm -hmm. I'm one of them, so I am a lot more sensitive to, to people, uh, the things that they say and do. I don't know, I, um, I don't know what else should I, how else should I feel? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, you, you tell know? me. <laughs> I don't know, I'm glad I did it. I would do it again, and I know um, most of the guys, because I, I was at some reunion, gosh, a veteran reunion, it was whenever they were, uh, was it after 9-11 when we went, they, they decided to go over and get somebody or whatever? <laughs> Most of the guys I was with wanted to volunteer. <laughs> well, you're too old, you know, <laughs> stop it. Let the young guys do it. <laughs> yes, they, but they, they were ready to go, you know, we'll go back. And um, so not all of them, because mm -hmm. I met some who are very bitter and, hated the military, hated the government, has nothing good to say, but most of the ones that I know aren't that bad. Mm -hmm. You know, um, yeah, I feel disappointed. I feel lied to in a, in a lot of ways, but... You probably impacted a lot of men, though. I hope so, you know, I hope. And my big deal is I want to meet somebody I took care of. Have you not yet? No. Oh, that would be really no. cool. Yeah. yeah. I, I go to a lot of reunions, uh, I, I'm involved with a group that, um, I don't know if they even have a picture of them down here. Um, Wolfhounds, a bunch of guys uh, you, way back used to do Civil War. It, we, then oh, they okay. did World War II. And they met a couple veterans here in Holland and they, well, they decided they were going to do Vietnam. And uh, Craig is a, a, a Wolfhound. But these guys, we got some from Wisconsin that come, Indiana, all over, because that's, that's how they met through these other groups. And we would go to um, various military events, and they asked, and I know Craig real well, and about three, four of the other guys, so they asked me to come too. I thought, sure. In a tent. They put up a big army tent where you would sleep in a tent on the cots. I could not bring my Coleman cooler anymore because that's not military. So I, I had to have a, the Mermite cans, those green things. And I tell you, that was. That was one of the greatest, there were four of us that were actual Vietnam vets that were part of this group, and the rest of them were just guys who loved history, whatever. They, the, the veterans that came would stop at the entrance of that tent, and they'd, and they'd just look. And <laughs> this, it was the smell. And the guys would have authentic stuff. If, you, if it wasn't true Vietnam, you don't put it out, kind of thing. And the veterans would walk, start walking through. Some of them had families with them, whatever, and they, Oh my God, I used to carry that, or I used to have one of these, and just to see their faces. And I had a couple women come back later and say, you know, that's the first time he ever talked to us. That's the first time we really heard. And then some of them would turn and walk away. They, they were not ready for it, mm -hmm. you know. That, and then one, one, I can't remember this, I wish, I don't remember his name, but I'd say, yeah, I was kind of waiting to, oh my God, I remember you, looking up at your beautiful brown eyes. No, I don't think so. <laughs> You're still getting it. <laughs> yes, but I would ask, were you, yeah, and I, so I met people who were there, but not when I was yeah. there. Oh, I hope you get to meet someone. Oh, I'm right? looking forward to great. it. Yeah, I think it would too. What lesson do you think the United States has learned from the Vietnam War, or has not learned? <laughs> I don't know if they have, because it's it was such a different war, I mean, just the, um, I don't know if mechanics not the right word. Whatever. Maybe context with the Cold War? I'm sorry, what? I think maybe the context of the war is different than we'd ever seen before. You know, it wasn't a World War II type of war. And the way it was, the way it was uh, battled out, mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't, I mean, walking through these jungles, and that's not, that's not fighting. I mean, looking for people, but of course they're doing that now in the other countries. It's the same kind of thing. Uh, it's a guerrilla war. It's not anything like the other war, like other wars were. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if they've learned. I really don't. 
Um, I think they have to listen to the people who have been there and, and, and listen to the, the uh, cause I, I remember sometimes thinking, and the guys would say, you know, they'd get these smart ass captains or lieutenants right out of school and uh, come over there to lead their squad. Well, they didn't want them. Some of them would listen to the older sergeants mm -hmm. and some of them wouldn't. Uh, and it was the same thing with the newbies. <laughs> these guys would tell stories. <laughs> Yeah, they tell me to go. Do, 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 do. And they knew it was it was a joke. It was you know, um, but they didn't want to be around that guy because mm -hmm. he's new kind of thing. Um, I I think I, I think they're learning some of that. I don't know. I really, as much as I, I I should probably pay more attention, but I don't. I get depressed. I guess listening to too much of the because I. I, I don't completely understand who's doing what to who. Um, I, I, you know, I, I'm not as uh, loyal to listening to the history and what's going on as I probably should. Yeah. But I really, I personally don't want to. Personally, don't care. That the, oh, I care, but I keep thinking, what difference does it make? Yeah. And that's kind of sad to feel that way. Uh, I'm just, I'm fortunate that my son never had to go. He was kind of in, in between uh, wars and stuff. But if he had wanted to, you know, I, you know, you gotta, gotta let him go and do what he wants. I know other, some family members who have gone and come back. Um, but it's, I don't know, it's hard to explain, I guess. Um, I don't want war. I don't, I don't know, a lot of people don't have any idea really what it's like because they're not affected. Obviously, uh, I can't remember how many, even now, what percentage of people are affected or have people in the military. Mm -hmm. they, they just don't get it. But I think there's more support now for military. I think that's one thing we have kind of learned is don't blame the soldier. Yes. For the war. Yes. Yes. Right. Yep. Uh, and I, that's true. I, I should have thought of that one right away. Um, and our guys even. See, I'm getting even my my wars mixed up, but because some of my buddies had their sons go to that, was it Hussein? I can't remember. Oh, do you which. mean Desert Storm in Be the '90s? Yeah, mm -hmm. I guess it was. Was that one of the first biggies? Well, we had the Desert Storm in the '90s, and that was with under George H. W. Bush, and that was short. And then we have the Iraq invasion in '03, and then Afghanistan after that. No, then it was the first one. Yeah, I think. Um, and they had their own, like, is it they? They, we'd go to the airports to meet them. Mm -hmm. We would, again, Holland, for whatever reason, I'd come back here and we'd have little uh, gatherings for them. And um, they were go not going to let it happen to their sons, what happened to them. Mm -hmm. uh, and not that I, we needed a parade or anything, but I think we just wanted to be more accepted, I guess, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, they're not going to let that happen to another group. And it's the same thing with the POWs. Mm -hmm. um, I read a couple books about that, and boy, mm -hmm. they, some of that is really scary. Yeah. When I think about what um, has happened to some of them, or has not happened to some of them because of what, for whatever reasons. Um, I did go to, um, I've met a couple prisoners that had been, you know, had come home and stuff. But I remember reading one book, and I'm, I remember about it, and I'm thinking, I don't know if we'd want them back. That's terrible to say, but what has happened to them over all these years, if they're still alive? Mm -hmm. You know, are they, I don't think most of them are anymore. Um, but then a lot of them wanted to stay too. I've heard those stories, you know, that they've wanted to stay over there. So they really weren't missing, but I don't know. And I do have a bracelet with one of them. Oh, because I was at some event and they were selling. I don't even know if they sell those anymore. Those POW bracelets. Yeah, I know you're talking yeah. about. I don't think I've seen them. Is it MIA or is it POW? I don't remember. He's on the wall, so he must be a KIA. Um, but then, okay, he, he, he uh, was from Kentucky. I served in Kentucky. He was a lieutenant. I was a, <laughs> a lieutenant. I mean, there are like three different things that connected me to him. So um, I, I go check on him every time I see the wall. It's just kind of nice to have one person, I yeah. guess, that I can relate to like that. So did you bring some photos? Yes. Can I see them? Now, do you want to do it on camera, or can I take a couple of photos of your photo? If there's something you want to. Okay, wear. that sounds yeah. good. So I'm going to end this recording then, yeah. unless there's anything you'd like to add. I don't know. Is there anything else you want to know? I mean, like I said, the number one, it depends on where you were and when you were there. Mm -hmm. 
I have more, the guys tell me the same thing, because some of these events that we would go to, the wolfhounds, they'd have out their weapons. Oh my God, these guys are nuts. With, and they're exactly what was used over there. A couple of them had even been brought back, kind of thing. And then you get some big old guy rock, oh, this isn't right, this isn't what, and the, hey, that's the way I did it. Don't you down me, I mean, and they get real defensive if somebody's gonna criticize something. And so we kind of make that point, all of us, I think, with people, it depends where you were. Mm -hmm. You may not have done that, but I did. Well, especially because it was our longest war to date at that point. Yeah. So things do yeah. change. Yeah, and, and so don't criticize other people. And I'm kind of, I even re remember reading, uh, uh, what is that book? Pieces of My Heart. Mm -hmm. And one of them is a girl I worked with. I, I thought, oh my God, I remember you. So I'm starting to read through it because I would recognize some doctor's names and some other people's names and I'm thinking, I don't remember that. Of course, different work, work different places. And, she came home and she was a mess, <laughs> you know? And I'm thinking, I don't know if my, uh, I wasn't that tough. It wasn't that hard for me to, when I came home. Um, I didn't really have too many issues that I was aware of. Although, I guess I do. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. Oh, well, I hope it helps.